Uh, today, a memorandum was signed in Kragujevac regarding the opening um, of the European House. So, we start the conversation uh, with the EU ambassador in Serbia, Emmanuel Joffre, uh, by asking whether this will uh, contribute to the citizens' better understanding of the importance of European integration. Well, thank you for having me with you uh, today. It's a pleasure to be in Kragujevac. It's a pleasure to be at uh, Class of Shumadia. Uh, the memorandum we signed today is precisely uh, uh, aiming at opening more uh, opportunity for the citizens of Kragujevac to know more about the European Union. We already have uh, uh, Europe houses or info center in, of course, Belgrade, uh, Niche and uh, Novi Sad, and, but we think we need to go beyond and we wanted to have a, a presence also in Shumadia, to a place where people can, can go to ask questions, uh, a space for citizens uh, to organize activity related to the European Union. Uh, and I think it will certainly contribute to have a better understanding what the EU stands for and what the great opportunities exist for the citizens of Serbia and of uh, Shumadia and Kragujevac. Uh, although the European Union uh, has been the biggest donor and investor in Serbia for 20 years, uh, the impression is that uh, citizens overestimate the help of uh, China and Russia. Why is that so? Well, the European Union is by far uh, the main economic partner of Serbia. Uh, more than 65% uh, uh, of the trade of Serbia is with the EU. Uh, is by far the main investors uh, here in uh, Serbia. 60% in the last 10 years of uh, foreign direct investment is coming from the European Union and is by far the main donors of Serbia. We are providing, uh, allocating 400 million euros every year and actually we're now planning to increase with uh, the growth plan. Uh, so certainly uh, we are uh, the main partner of Serbia and the main, and the all respect uh, and certainly we need to better explain to the citizens this reality because even if um, we know that the majority of uh, Serbian citizens know that the EU is the main uh, donors of Serbia we're about 40 percent uh, according to our polling we need to do better because uh, we are certainly one or three notches above everyone else Part of the opposition in Serbia uh, believes that uh, despite the lag in media reforms in the judiciary, democratization of society, uh, the European Union supports the government in Serbia. Uh, what is your comment? Well, my comment is that we support uh, Serbia and we support the Serbian citizens. Of course, we work with the government, uh, but not only with the government, we also work uh, with the business sector, we work with civil society, we work with local authority, we work with the farmers. Uh, the idea is that uh, we want to make Serbia ready to be a member of the European Union and therefore we need to work uh, with the central government, and the local government, but all, the, all society. And this is the idea, this is the objective, uh, to make uh, Serbia a member of the European Union. And this is why also we need to interact and uh, uh, have a dialogue with the civil society and uh, parties that are not in government and the opposition, because this is a project that requires a certain level of consensus within society, perhaps not unanimity, but certainly a large consensus. And we try to reach out all sectors of Serbian society. Uh, today um, in Kragujevac, uh, the opposition um, requested a meeting with you because of the parliamentary crisis in Kragujevac, as they said. <coughs> uh, what was discussed on the meeting? Well, the meeting was uh, organized uh, 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 without being uh, uh, pre-planned, but there was a request and uh, we managed to find a, a, a short uh, period of time uh, to meet them. Uh, it's important for us to meet <coughs> all uh, all uh, um, forces uh, and therefore if there was an opportunity to discuss them they uh, express uh, their concern we, we, we listened and it was also an opportunity to explain the reason of our visit here and our plan for Kragujevac. You have uh, recently attended a meeting uh, between the authorities and the opposition on the upcoming elections with the American ambassador Christopher Hill. Uh, today it is clear that uh, part of the opposition will not participate in the local elections in Belgrade, Belgrade scheduled for June 2. Uh, what is your opinion about this? 
Well, our opinion is that uh, uh, after the, um, the elections uh, uh, last December uh, and the report of Odir, uh, we know that there were a number of uh, 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 shortcomings in the election system and a number of issues that need to be improved. Uh, and we uh, received a number of recommendations from Odir. Some of these recommendations are actually quite old, others are new. Uh, so our position, it was important that we work on the implementation of this recommendation to improve the election uh, framework. And this has to be done uh, in an inclusive manner. So all political parties, but also civil society, need to be involved in order to have uh, an agreement on how to implement this recommendation. And this, there is a process that is uh, trying to uh, look at this. And then there was also a, a discussion on, on the date of elections. Eventually, uh, uh, the speaker took the initiative, uh, also on request of, of the opposition, to uh, bring together both the Belgrade elections and the, the local elections are yet to be celebrated. And uh, I think this is a positive step. Uh, we also saw that uh, uh, there was a vote in the Skupšina to amend the local election law uh, in order to allow this uh, vote on June the 2nd. Uh, and uh, it was a, a, a vote by uh, many members of the Skupčina from the opposition and uh, but also many from the government, of course. So these are certainly a positive step. Uh, and we think that participation is important, that democracy live through the participation of citizens, live through the participation of political forces, uh, that uh, the presence of uh, different political forces making the institutions stronger. We believe in dialogue, we believe it's important to find compromise. Compromise is not a defeat, compromise can be a victory for both sides. So this is what we, we support uh, and this is what we hope uh, we will see um, in Serbia uh, more and more. And certainly we hope to see uh, the recommendation of Odir to be fully implemented uh, in the, the period to come. Uh, do you think it is possible to implement uh, the recommendation of Odir? on elections in Serbia, which are related to electoral reform? Yeah, I think it is possible to uh, implement those recommendations. Uh, uh, Odir uh, is uh, also uh, actively working with, uh, with the government uh, in order to provide technical assistance to implement those recommendations. Uh, they, need, they, we need to have a debate on the recommendation. We need to uh, see what the recommendation exactly means how it can be implemented, whether the political forces uh, agree with the recommendation, uh, and this is what we need to do. But it, is, it has to be done in an inclusive manner. When we say inclusive, that there must be transparent debate, bringing in also uh, those civil society organizations uh, that have an expertise uh, on election that can bring uh, added value, international players like ODIR and political forces. Uh, and for us, it's uh, a very important uh, aspect that we have been uh, uh, indicating the importance of the implementation of the recommendation in our annual reports uh, for quite many years. So I think that uh, now we might have an opportunity to work. Of course, some recommendation will require some more time to be implemented and therefore we need also continued commitment by the authorities and the political forces to continue working on this. Uh, do you think the citizens of Serbia know what accession to the European Union uh, brings to them? I think that uh, the citizens uh, of Serbia understand that uh, uh, membership of the European Union will bring a lot of benefit. Uh, but uh, what we need to do now is to also uh, show more concretely what this benefit uh, can be. Uh, I know that uh, the moment uh, where the EU membership was the most popular in Serbia is when uh, the visa to the European Union were uh, cancelled uh, about 15 years ago. So it's, it's normal that citizens, can, when they can feel the direct benefit of your membership, they will understand better. And this is exactly what we're trying to do now with the, uh, the growth plan for the Western Balkans, uh, that is the new initiative of the European Union. Uh, the growth plan is precisely there to uh, uh, identify a number of areas where the benefit of membership can already be uh, um, granted to the citizens of the Western Balkans. Uh, for example, uh, we're discussing now uh, Serbia and other countries to be part of the single European payment area. What does it mean that? It means that within the EU, when you make a, a payment, a transfer between Lisbon and Tallinn, you don't pay anything. There's no fees. But at the moment, 
if you make a transfer between uh, Vienna and Belgrade, there is a fee to, to be paid. So if we are together in the same space, we will reduce the cost of transition and the citizens can transfer money to the EU, business can buy uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, commodities or sell the commodities to the EU without paying fees. So it's very concrete. The same thing for roaming. Uh, when you travel out of Serbia and you go to the EU, you go to Greece, you go to Austria, you have very high roaming fees. And now we are reducing those uh, roaming fees and we hope to, to advance. Or for trucks, when you export a truck uh, of goods to Hungary, then you have to spend uh, uh, many hours, if not many days, at the border. So we're trying to see whether through the green lane we can actually eliminate this. So very concrete issues that really touch the life of the citizens. And then we know that uh, we need to increase the economic growth in the Western Balkans, because even if Serbia has been successful economically in the last 10 years, the GDP per capita in Serbia is still 42% of the EU average. And even if you grow quite uh, intensively, it will take many, many years to reach the average. So we need to go faster. And this is why the European Union has allocated more funding uh, for the Western Balkans, because you need to receive almost as much as you member states receive when they are already inside the European Union. And this is again part of the growth plan. But also, we need reforms. And this is part of the equation. Without reforms, we cannot achieve this. So the growth plan is also about accelerating reforms. And this is why we are now negotiating an agenda of reforms with Serbia and all the Western Balkan partners. And we're looking at areas like uh, business environment, uh, the digital and green transition, uh, but also the fundamentals. Uh, and because fundamentals being a fight against corruption, so, uh, democratic elections, uh, uh, protection of minority, etc. So we hope that uh, in, a few, in a few weeks, uh, a couple of months, we will have this uh, agreed agenda of reforms and we can uh, start uh, uh, providing additional support to Serbia for project and budget support and at the same time working on integrating Serbia in the internal market uh, even today. Great. Uh, which are the areas on which Serbia should uh, focus in order to accelerate European integration? Well, I think that uh, uh, there are clearly priority areas. Uh, the first one, again, are the fundamentals, uh, because the new uh, way of uh, accelerating uh, accession is to, uh, what we say, meeting the interim benchmark. What does that mean, the interim benchmarks of chapter 23-24? It's very obscure, but basically is to make progress on Serbia's commitment when it comes to uh, media pluralism, uh, fight against corruption, fight against organized crime, etc, etc, etc. So certainly this is an area where uh, Serbia needs to, to focus. Then, uh, of course, there is the issue of uh, the, the green transition. Uh, we need to reduce carbon emission, we need to transform our economy, uh, and uh, Serbia has made uh, a number of progress, we, but we need more uh, renewables, uh, renewable sources of energy in the energy mix. Uh, we need to advance on the digital transition and yes, Serbia has done quite a, a good job so far. Uh, and then of course uh, uh, there is the issue which is very specific uh, to Serbia, which is Kosovo. The normalization of the relationship between Belgrade and Pristina. Uh, we have now this uh, agreement that we reached uh, last year in Brussels and Ohrid. So the implementation of those agreements that are part now of the uh, the negotiating framework, as we say, uh, uh, and this is certainly important. Obviously, uh, we also need uh, the support of uh, the commitment of Pristina, and uh, we need also to see important uh, obligations that uh, Pristina had entered into, like the creation of the Association of Serbian Municipality, to, the, to be implemented. We're living in a different uh, geopolitical context uh, after the Russian aggression against the Ukraine. Uh, there is a new momentum for enlargement. Uh, the member states of the European Union and the EU institutions have put enlargement again at the top of the priority. So it's a new opportunity, but it's a, a context which requires that we stick together, uh, that we uh, align uh, our policy 
that we decide that we want to be uh, viable and sincere partners uh, for each other. And I think this is the way forward. If we do this, we will certainly be able to seize this opportunity, which is uh, an opportunity that uh, uh, is there to, to, to be seized uh, and uh, we cannot miss it. Thank you very much uh, once again. My pleasure.